Okay, welcome back to the studio. This week we're going to be talking about uh, analog mixing and in particular EQs. So, analog mixing and EQing. Uh, EQs, that's all these little knobs here. Uh, let's take a look at the differences between doing it analog and doing it in the box digitally using uh, Logic or Pro Tools or something like that. So, when we are uh, an doing EQs analog, uh, we are physically making changes to the signal as it comes through the channel strip. When you are EQing in the box, in Logic or Pro Tools, you are not actually making any changes to any signal. There is no signal. Uh, effectively, once you've converted it to digital, uh, it's just a bunch of zeros and ones in a computer. So the changes that you're asking the computer to make, it's going to make them, but when you're playing it back, uh, you're hearing a digital representation of uh, those, what it would have sounded like had you have made those changes in, uh, in real life. So unlike uh, in the analog world where we've physically changed the electrical signal as it's come through the channel strip, you've not really changed uh, any signal. It's just a digital representation or like a copy of what the, those EQs uh, might have sounded like, uh, which is why Digital EQs and EQ in the box, um, although it can come close, it will never actually sound quite like the real thing. Uh, and that's, I mean, fundamentally down to how digital, uh, digital audio works. Once you've converted a waveform into uh, digital, you convert it into a bunch of zeros and ones. It's, uh, the computer sees it in intervals, and that's your, uh, your sample rate. Uh, so there is fundamentally in all those in between all those intervals there is uh, audio signal missing, which is why uh, digital audio always sounds a little bit thinner and a little bit flatter than uh, than its analog counterpart. So there's really no way of uh, getting over that hurdle. Um, but yeah, when when we're talking about the differences between uh, affecting a signal, uh, analog and digital, uh, in digital, if you're doing it in the box. Your, there is no signal that you're actually affecting. Uh, you know, the signal uh, stops at the point of conversion, it's converted into a bunch of data that the computer understands, and then when you ask it to play it back, it will then convert it back into a signal at that point. Now, you could, of course, uh, be doing your digital conversion and then playing back through an analog console or a piece of outboard analog hardware, in which case you will be affecting um, a signal. However, the damage has already been done at that point, uh, and you're affecting what's already been converted into uh, into a digital signal. Although this will be somewhat better than uh, than doing it purely in the box. Now, when it comes to EQing, I will always try and do as little as possible. Uh, now, that's not because I'm lazy and I don't want to do anything. It's purely because uh, the recording should already sound great. Uh, what we're trying to do, we're not trying to add anything when we're EQing. We're not trying to make it sound good. It should already sound good. We're trying to make it sound clear. We're trying to make each individual instrument and each individual part come through as clearly and with the highest quality possible. Uh, I approach it from the view of starting by uh, listening to it and perhaps taking things away, taking away unwanted frequencies, frequencies that are competing with uh, other tracks or, or other microphones that may be picking up uh, the same thing. Realistically, we shouldn't be making any dramatic changes to EQs. If you find yourself making dramatic changes, the chances are something's gone awry during the recording process. Uh, your mic placement might not have been quite so good. Uh, perhaps the polarity of the mic wasn't correct or you've got some sort of some sort of phasing issue going on and you've got competing frequencies there so uh, I would take a look at that if you're finding yourself making dramatic changes to EQs like I say we try and make as little change as possible we're just trying to make the sound come through nice and clear so for example with things like bass and guitars I tend to find uh, that the low end and the low mids have lots of competing frequencies so I might roll off some of uh, some of the low end on guitars and bass. Uh, with regards to things like cymbals uh, and more higher end frequencies, uh, some cymbals come through really nice and crisp and record really beautifully. Others can sound a little bit washy. Uh, and again, that's something that we'd want to touch up with the EQ. Digital uh, EQing, EQing in the box on the other hand, 
that's a different story. You will probably find, uh, and I might put it up on the screen now, changes like this being made. Now this I would consider uh, to be a very dramatic uh, change to the, uh, to the EQ. If I were to do this you, on, a, on an analog EQ, that would be very dramatic indeed, and it probably wouldn't sound very good. Uh, however, in uh, the digital world, it's quite normal to see very dramatic EQ changes. Like I say, uh, you're dealing with a completely different animal when you're dealing with uh, digital audio. You're not affecting the, an actual signal. So to get changes to come through, you will have to make slightly more dramatic uh, movements on your, on your EQs. This, of course, would be less so if you were, if you were recording digitally, you'd converted to digital and then you're uh, mixing using an analog piece of hardware uh, and you're mixing the signal that's being played back. Uh, again, that would be uh, slightly more closer to, uh, to doing an analog mix where you are making changes to a signal. So you would probably find that the changes that you're having to make are uh, a little bit less dramatic than, uh, than in the box. Although by far the biggest difference between using analog EQs and uh, digital in the box EQ is the visual aspect. Uh, when you're using uh, an outboard piece of hardware, uh, an analog console, and you're using the EQs on there, there's no screen to look at. There's no visual uh, cues that you're, that you're recognizing. You're purely listening to the sound and making the appropriate changes. Using a digital EQ, you are inevitably looking at a screen. You'll be seeing uh, the frequency bands and seeing a wavy uh, EQ line that you're making changes to. And uh, unfortunately, this can lead to a bit of a habit where you might start to recognize what you previously thought sounded good in uh, other sessions and trying to uh, recreate this visually uh, on the screen. Of course, not all guitars, not all uh, drums and cymbals sound the same or have been recorded in the same way. So the EQ changes that you're going to make shouldn't really be the same. But like I say, you can get into the habit of visually recognizing uh, what, it, what it previously looked at, looked like and what you thought was a great guitar sound and trying to apply that to future uh, mixes. That's uh, obviously a bad habit. You should be listening to the mix uh, and listening to the EQ changes rather than looking at them visually. And this is uh, another downside of uh, digital recording um, is the visual aspect of things. Uh, you should be listening to the sound, not looking at it. Personally, of course, I would recommend doing everything analog, but I'm talking from the position of running an analog studio and uh, the way we do things here, if you've watched any of our other videos, you might already be aware, we record everything to multi-track tape. Everything is analog. Uh, we mix analog. Uh, literally, we will not do any digital conversion until the very last part of the process, once we're 100% happy, and that's uh, to keep uh, the highest quality audio and uh, the highest fidelity we possibly can. So I hope you found that interesting or helpful in some way. Um, as always, if you've got any questions, feel free to put them down in the comments and we'll get around to answering them as soon as we can. Uh, I'll put a couple of links up to videos where you can actually watch us doing uh, EQing. We've uh, released a couple of uh, videos where we've uh, done fully analog mixes so you can see the, uh, see the EQing process live in action.